Let's discuss one of the potential mechanisms of nerve injury during interscaling brachioplexus block. We're going to use Nysora's reverse ultrasound anatomy animation to explain what can potentially happen. But before we get started, let us just briefly discuss some of the anatomical elements that are important. The, this is the brachial plexus, so this is a C5, this is a C6, and this is a C7. The brachial plexus is sandwiched by the two muscles, middle scalene muscle and anterior scalene muscle, but more importantly, it is actually surrounded by fascial sheath, by fascia. That fascia is called the brachial plexus sheath, which is made up by the myosome of the anterior scalene muscle and the middle scalene muscle. Another important anatomical element is the cervical fascia. Cervical fascia lays on top of the middle scalene muscle and anterior scalene muscle, and the cervical fascia oftentimes encloses the phrenic nerve as well. As the needle passes from the skin towards the interscalene space for an injection, it has to pass through two important fascial layers. That's the cervical fascia and the brachial plexus fascia. Okay, so as we now watch the needle pass into the tissue, you can see how the needle now engages the cervical fascia. Fascia layers are tough. The needle always has to fight them. And as the needle pushes to penetrate the fascia, Eventually, the fascia gives in. The fascia is typically tougher than the tissue before the fascia or the tissue after the fascia. For that reason, when you penetrate the fascia, two things happen. Number one, you oftentimes perceive a pop or a click because you penetrate that tough layer. And number two, the needle tends to pass somewhat uncontrollably. So let's watch that. As this fascia layer, the cervical fascia, gives in, you could see how the needle tends to penetrate without a control a bit. And as the needle now approaches the brachial plexus sheath, and again, it has to engage another tough fascial sheath. And as the needle is fighting and bending and distorting, engaging that fascia sheath, eventually it gives in. And as it gives in, the needle again tends to pop into the interscaling brachial plexus uncontrollably. And let's see this. So as the needle passes through the brachial plexus sheath, again, it may come in violently. And in this particular situation, the needle did not appear to injure any of these neural elements, but it suddenly has rearranged them around. This is one of the reasons why even when using ultrasound guidance during interscaling brachial plexus or any other nerve block, we like to use nerve stimulation. We set the stimulator at 0.5 milliamps and never change it during the procedure. But in this particular example, if you had the nerve stimulator on at 0.5 milliamps, it's quite likely or possible that you would get an unexpected distal motor response that could indicate that you are very close to the nerve or on the nerve, which would give you an opportunity to stop the needle advancement and reassess without the sound the needle position before advancing further. And finally, as the needle makes its way inside before we commit to an injection, we always monitor opening injection pressure. If the needle is lodged into the, one of these neural elements, into the fascicles, into the fascia, you are likely are going to have abnormally high opening injection pressure, the pressure at which you need to generate in order to commence an injection. And this is again why we use typically nerve stimulation and opening injection pressure every time we do a peripheral nerve block procedure.